there are many of you out there, and uh, I hope uh, you represent all our great states and territories in Australia, and perhaps even some people overseas. Uh, this is pretty simple. I and my colleagues uh, are going to talk to you about uh, life in Treasury, and hopefully that will answer some of the questions if you're considering joining us as a graduate. And uh, I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves and where they come from. I uh, am John Fraser. I've been Secretary of the uh, Department since uh, January 2015, but I was in the Department from 1973 to 1993 before I went to join the private sector, working principally in London. And I indeed also was a graduate recruit. Uh, I became a recruit in 1971 too, a long, long time ago. But, Ange. Uh, thanks, John. So I too was a graduate in the late 90s. And I'm currently the Principal Advisor Forecasting in the Macroeconomic Conditions Division. So I get to work with an incredibly uh, talented bunch of people to put together the forecast for you, uh, both on the world and the domestic economies. Uh, we do that uh, in a whole lot of sector teams, and we do a lot of econometrics, and we do a lot of modelling. But we also talk to a lot of people, and we get out there to find out what's really happening. And we talk to the states and territories a lot. So I um, enjoy very much forecasting. Uh, and like the Treasury a great deal and have been there for quite a while. I also benefited, uh, Treasury supported me uh, to study and to do a PhD a couple of years ago. So I also have the benefit of working part-time as an academic uh, while also being in the Treasury. Hamish. Hi, so I'm Hamish McDonald. So I was a graduate in 2003, so about 30 years later. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no worries. So straight away, so straight away when I came to the department, I was working on a lot of important policy issues around health and income support and education. And then since then, I've had a whole range of experiences in the department. So most recently, I spent two and a half years in Delhi, working in the High Commission over there, uh, getting out and about and talking to people across all of India and trying to help develop Australia's sort of medium-term uh, view of India's prospects. Uh, now I'm in the new structural reform group, uh, which is working on a whole lot of important issues like competition, like energy markets, and the uh, impacts of structural reform in the economy on industries and on regions. Uh, so this is a really exciting new group that's just been created just this month, uh, and it's got, a, it's got a great set of people that we're working with, and we're also trying out some new and more flexible ways of working together to sort of promote more collaboration and promote more outreach beyond the department. Okay, well, um, if you wish, it's not compulsory, but if you wish, you can tap out some questions for us and we'll do our best to answer them um, uh, as we go through. Look, in short, uh, what I'm looking for and my colleagues are looking for in Treasury is people who have a passion for economic policy formulation, a passion for being part of policy advising to the government of the day, and a passion also for thinking about issues, whether they be short, medium or longer term. We want people who work collaboratively as a team. We have offices in Melbourne and Sydney as well as the principal office in Canberra. And we look more and more to draw on our offices overseas. We have posts in Washington DC, Tokyo, Beijing, Jakarta, London and um, Paris as well as in Mumbai. And we see ourselves very much as part of a global network uh, of gathering information. As Ange said, we also uh, work very closely with the under-treasurers or the treasuries in each of the states and territories. And most importantly, we li liaise more and more with the private sector. Uh, not just the big end of town, big business, but also small and medium business, and also um, with the industry groups, uh, as well as universities and think tanks. Um, in short, also, we, we're not looking for people who want to sign up for life, necessarily. And when I joined Treasury a long, long time ago, uh, that's what people did. They joined up to become permanent public servants and be there for 40 years plus or whatever. Nowadays, the world's moved on, thankfully, and this is about people who want to join us for, say, three to five years and then make a decision about where they want to go, stay within the public service or go out to the private sector. I, I left Treasury in 1993 and went to the uh, private sector and I think that's what we've got to recognise. We want good people and um, that's why we're doing this session. 
Some have been asked, when do applications for the grad program open? And the answer is, they are open now, and they close on the 1st of May, the 1st of May. So if you are thinking of complying, uh, get on with it, and uh, we will organise uh, the interviews. Uh, it's about uh, you making sure that you want to join us as much as we want to make sure that you're the right sort, sort of person uh, that we want. Uh, Hamish. Uh, another question that's come in is, uh, what are the kinds of work that graduates might be doing when they start off in Treasury? Um, so, uh, I guess from day one you'll be contributing, uh, if you're in the structural reform group, you'll be contributing to developing our view on economic policy issues. So from day one people will be involved in our discussions about what the Treasury position is on things like electricity markets. We've got an excellent grad at the moment, Lex, who's working on electricity markets and really helping develop our thinking, bringing new ideas into the team on uh, how we should respond to challenges in the electricity sector. And that will then feed into um, thinking about, uh, feed into briefing the Treasurer. So, you know, within your first six months you'd expect to be, you know, writing briefings to the Treasurer, contributing to those briefings, and those would be taken account of in uh, Cabinet deliberations. Um, we've got a question, how many Indigenous staff work at Treasury? And the answer is simply not enough. We are keen to welcome more. Uh, we're making a determined effort not only to encourage Indigenous staff in Australia, but we're also doing training programs with our good friends from Papua New Guinea. And we are also having Indigenous uh, uh, potential staff uh, joining us uh, later in the year, uh, coming down through the Northern Territory. The public service overall has a target of 3% for Indigenous staff. Some departments are well ahead of that, such as the Department of Defence, and also the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, which is responsible for Indigenous matters. So it's, it's a hard one, and we do our best, but as I said at the start, not enough. So John, we have another question. Um, we're being asked what uh, working at Treasury does to give us insight into the government. And I suppose in terms of my area, I would say that we regularly talk to government ministers. We talk to them about the economy and how uh, the outlook is unfolding. Uh, but it's also true that all of our policy areas um, very much are involved in cabinet submissions and in quite uh, important decisions of government and decisions that matter a lot for the Australian people. Now we've got a question there I think on the screen. Do you need to do psychometric testing to get into the program? Now, I'm not sure if that's someone being a little bit humorous or trying to be. My understanding is we don't. I certainly uh, am not a big fan of psychometric testing for a number of reasons, but that's a, that's a, that's a personal view, but I see my colleagues are all saying we don't do that, so put your mind at ease on that. Uh, somebody else has asked, what's Canberra like? Well, Canberra is the centre of our nation. Uh, it's a town which is very much focused on government, as you'd expect. Uh, there's about roughly, I think, about 340,000 people in Canberra at the moment. I came to Canberra in 1973. It's developed uh, grandly since then, uh, both in terms of uh, the range of people who are in Canberra, uh, the activity, simple little things like when I came to Canberra in '73, there were only three restaurants. It was, it is, was, and will be even more a very uh, sports-oriented city, whether it be AFL, rugby league, or rugby union, or cricket, or tennis basketball, netball, you name it, and athletics. Uh, it's also, these days, far easier to uh, go to places like Sydney and Melbourne at the weekend. When I first came here, it was a massive trip. Uh, look, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting place. Now, I should also mention, today is the day we launch our essay competition. Uh, this is a competition for university students uh, to, uh, you can get the information on our uh, website uh, through the Treasury Research Institute essay competition and uh, that is for an essay around the theme of what is the most important factor and why to uh, guarantee or guarantee or encourage longer term growth for Australia. I think the prize I'm looking for it is about $2,000.
two and a half. It's two and a half thousand dollars, and um, it's uh, two thousand words or less. And uh, we need the entries by July, 14th of July. What makes a candidate for the graduate program stand out, Ange? Passion, John. I think we know enough from you to know that we look for passionate people who like to work as teams and they're committed to working on things that matter for the Australian people. Hamish, you got anything else you want to add? Uh, I mean, I'd say that you know it's a big privilege providing advice to the government on policy issues. So, you know, if you're the sort of person who likes watching the politics on the TV, TV news at night, and then yells, "I wish they'd thought, spoken to me," they'd have a different view. And if you can back that up with some solid arguments and some decent arguments that that, are, that balance the different issues, then you know, come along to the treasury because that's the place to be. We want to be known. We want to be known for our ideas. We want to be known for thinking about issues, analysing them, and being brave enough, because you often have to be brave enough, to say what we think, but backing it up with good analysis. And that's the most important thing we can achieve in Treasury. We want to make those ideas relevant, but we also want to make them robust. And that's one of the reasons why we have made a determined effort to interact with the community far more generally to make sure that we are picking up what's, um, what people are thinking. And then we're being asked another question, how do you deal with the politics that comes along with policy? Well, we're public servants, and I say that proudly, that's not a demeaning term, quite the opposite. Our politicians are there to represent the people, and we have to work within a paradigm which is defined by the political parameters. That doesn't mean we are constrained in our thinking. We must think and think out of the box. We must think the unthinkable at times. But we must put forward policy advice that we believe in and that we think is based on sound analysis and understanding of these issues. Wrapping up the whole thing. OK, well, uh, thanks for that. Uh, what I'd suggest is you go on our Treasury website and on Facebook if you're interested. Um, there's a link available also on the Facebook page to our Treasury Research Institute uh, uh, competition. And if you've got any further questions, put them on Facebook and I guarantee we will give you a response as quickly as possible. With that, I'll leave it at that. Oh, someone's saying, no, don't finish. And they're not related to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, so, anyway, we'll leave it at that. Please be in touch. Uh, I, what I can promise you, if you join us, you'll enjoy yourself. You'll enjoy yourself. Take care, everybody, and thanks for tuning in.